Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, this is Dr. Vishal Tribedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about how to produce or how to generate the genetically modified organism utilizing the biotechnology related principles. And in this particular discussion, we so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about different properties of the host, whether it is the uh, structure of the host uh, which we have discussed in the module 1 or whether it is the um, pr procedure or the approaches how to isolate a particular gene from the host that we have discussed in the module 2 and uh, following that we were also uh, discussing about the different genetic tools what we have uh, what we are what are available to perform the uh, biotechnology related uh, recombinant DNA technology. And in this context, today we are going to discuss about the uh, vector or the transforming agents. So, if you have, uh, uh, so what we have discussed so far, we have discussed about how to produce the genetically modified plasmid or the recombinant plasmids. And for producing this recombinant plasmid, we, we need the, uh, the gene from the uh, particular host which you can isolate either by the PCR or if you can isolate that from the genomic library or the cDNA library. Once you got this gene, you, you have to digest the gene with the particular set of restriction enzymes and the, similarly you have to also digest the transforming agents with the same set of restriction enzyme and after that you have to put these two components together in a ligation reaction and then you have to transform that into the bacteria to produce the genetically modified organisms. So, so far we have discussed many aspects related to the host such as we have discussed about the structure of prokaryotic or the eukaryotic genes or uh, eukaryotic organisms. We have also discussed about the downstream metabolisms. We have also discussed what are the different uh, media or the media components what are required to propagate the uh, prokaryotic as well as the eukaryotic cell and when we also have discussed how to propagate or how to monitor the growth of a bacteria in a particular uh, media. And Following that, we have also discussed about how to isolate a gene from the host so that you can use these gene into the downstream recombinant DNA technology to generate the recombinant DNA plasmid. Now, following this discussion, today we are going to discuss about the uh, transforming agents. So, the transforming agents which are actually performing to carry the, the, the foreign gene is called as the vector. So, what is the purpose of a vector is that the vector is the DNA which actually has two responsibility. It should be have the ability to carry a foreign DNA and it should be have the ability to replicate in the host. Uh, uh, so, uh, to carry a plasmid DNA uh, or to carry the uh, foreign DNA and to abli ability to replicate in the host, the vectors should have the de desirable features or the properties. So, what are these properties? The property is, the number one is that the, the, uh, vec the a good vector should be of a low molecular weight. The vector you can, uh, you can easily, you, you can easily understood this simply by that vector is nothing but a carrier which actually going to carry the DNA from the one host to another host where it is actually going to provide this DNA for its expression. Now, you can imagine that suppose you are would like to carry the goods from your home 
to the another place and for that if you are looking for a carrier you are also looking for a carrier which will be of low molecular weight or the which will be very light so that you could be able to fill as many as material as you want. For example, if we have a vehicle which actually can run 14 kilometer in a 1 liter, but it depends on the what is the uh, what is the uh, what is the uh, uh, what is the weight you are going to put into this vehicle so if the vehicle itself is going to be of 100 kg and the total carrying capacity of this vehicle is only 1000 kg then you will be able to put a, only 900 kg as the weight which it can carry whereas you can imagine a situation where if suppose we make a vehicle which is of 75 kg this means you are actually can be able to carry more the more material into this forget about this if you have a vehicle of 50 kg you will be do going to carry more number of material into this similarly you can understand in the same way that you need a looking for a vector which is going to be of low molecular weight because the higher level of the molecular weight of the, uh, the vector will reduce its tendency or capacity to carry the bigger foreign DNA. So, as you remember when we were discussing about the preparation of genomic DNA or the cDNA library, we have given you a table which says that what is the carrying capacity of different, uh, different uh, vectors and you might remember that for the bigger genome you might have to use the carrier which can carry bigger um, bigger uh, piece of dna so uh, so the mol no molecular weight are is is having two uh, having many advantages one is the small size of the vector is robust towards the shear stress and easy to handle because uh, uh, because you can imagine that if you have a larger dna and if you have a large size of dna it is actually been prone for shear stresses for and also the isolation of these kind of genomic this kind of vector is a time consuming as well as it is not easy to perform in addition to that the the ligating the foreign dna into the vector the size of the resulting recombinant dna will be of a small right and because it is a small it can be delivered very easily into the host cell and because it is small so that is what we are saying that if you are actually can if the if the vehicle if the if the total amount what it can go into the host cell is only 1000 kg you can actually increase the number of insert or the increase increase the number of size of the foreign dna automatically simply by reducing the size of the vector and that has a ad additional advantage that isolating this particular type of vector is easy the uh, transforming the rec uh, resulting recombinant dna is easy because the the the, f the resulting uh, recombinant dna is also going to be of a smaller in size and at the end the uh, uh, the transformation is going to be very very easy so and on the other hand the manipulation of this smaller dna is going to be easier compared to the manipulation of the larger dna uh, the second phenotype which actually also be very important for a vector is that it should give you a phenotypic changes in the host when it enters into the host cell it should give you the phenotypic changes how it is important is that the when you put the vector dna uh, into the host it should actually once if we give start giving you the phenotypic changes then it is easier for the uh, for us to isolate that particular host cell which is actually having the vector which you have put compared to the untransformed uh, host cells one of the classical example is that the blue white screening where the colony color itself will tell you whether a particular type of host cell is uh, is having the vector or is not having the vector similarly you have the some of the vector which actually contains the different types of 
the uh, uh, reporter genes and that reporter gene actually also will give the phenotypic changes in the host cells once they once the vector enter into the host cells and that is uh, very important and that actually facilitate the isolation as well as identification of the host cells which are uh, which have taken up the vector. The third which is very important is that the, uh, the good vector should have the multiple cloning sites with the unique restriction site. When it says a unique restriction site is that these are the restriction sites which are not going to be repeat uh, within, the, uh, within the body of the particular vector and the multiple cloning site is going to be the site where you can choose these restriction sites to clone your or to insert your uh, the your uh, uh, foreign DNA. Uh, then the fourth is the high copy number. So, if the vector is of a high copy number or a smaller uh, or a low copy number, the high copy number vector is always been desirable because it is actually going to give you the more amount of DNA from the same bacteria. What is mean by the copy number is that the particular vector is going to have those many copies within the bacterial cell. You know that the plasmid is the extra chromosomal DNA which is present inside the bacterial cell. This we have discussed when we were discussing about the structure of the prokaryotic cell. So, it could be uh, one number, it could be two number, it could be 10, it could be 20, it could be 500 and it could be thousands. So, as you as the number will go up, the final product what you are going to get from these vector is also going to be higher because the every plasmid or every vector is going to carry your foreign DNA and that is how the every uh, vector is going to produce the those number of number of molecules. This means a high copy number of uh, vector is going to let you to isolate the very large quantity of that particular DNA or the correspondingly it also can lead you to produce the large quantity of proteins. But when you talk about the high copy number uh, vectors, it also has a disadvantage in terms of that suppose you are over expressing a protein which is toxic or which is non desirable for the or it, which is actually going to disturb the cellular metabolism of the bacteria. In those cases, the high copy number of vector is not desirable because the high copy number uh, actually gives very high quantity of that particular protein and such a large quantity disturbance in the metabolism sometime actually does not allow the bacteria to survive. Whereas, if you work with the low copy number vectors, it actually in going it, 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 it still creates the disturbance to the bacterial metabolism, but that actually uh, uh, is so slow or it actually happens so slowly that the bacteria get adopted to, to that particular type of changes. And in those cases we normally use the low copy number of plasmids or we know copy number of vectors. Uh, uh, but in general if you are using the vectors for carrying the foreign DNA which means if you are just using the vectors for cloning purposes not for the overexpression or the production of protein purposes then it is always been desirable that you use the vector which should have the high copy number because it at the end it is going to give you the more number of DNA. So, taking, taking these into criteria we have the uh, uh, you have to have these many number of components of the vector. So, the, num the minimum number of components which are required to, to perform the function of the vector which we have just discussed that it should have this is the criteria of a good vector and these are the molecular components of a particular vector. The first is the origin of replication. Okay. As you have seen in the first slide itself that the, uh, the, the property of a vector is that it should be uh, it should be able to replicate within the host. Okay. So, that replication is going to be decided by the origin of replication. So, every vector should have its own origin of replication and it depends on the type of uh, host it is going to uh, uh, it is going to uh, work. For example, 
if you have the bacterial plasmids or bacterial vector, then it should have the origin of replication for the bacterial system. If it is for the mammalian system, then it should have the origin of replication for the uh, uh, for the mammalian system. So, the bacterial plasmid needs its own independent origin of replication to provide the replication start site to make more copies. It decides the range of bacterial host strain can be used with a particular vector. For example, the plasmids carrying origin of replication from col E1 can be able to grow in limited number of bacteria such as E. coli. In contrast, the plasmid containing ORI from the RP4 or RSF1010 can be able to grow in gram negative as well as the gram positive. So, that depending on the origin of replication what you use to, to, uh, to prepare a vector decides whether this particular type of vector is going to replicate in the uh, particular host strain or not. For example, in this case, if you are having the call e, uh, original replication from call E1, it is only going to replicate within the E. coli. Whereas, if you have taken the origin of replication from RP4 or RSF1010, that is actually will allow you to generate a vector which will actually will grow in gram negative as well as the gram positive bacteria. Apart from the origin of replication, the vector should have the selection marker which means you have to have a some kind of selection pressure which will allow you to select the transformed host cells from the non-transformed host cells which means the host cell which have taken up your vector uh, in, in comparison to the host cell which have not taken up your vector. This selection marker could be in the form of antibiotic resistance genes or it could be an enzymatic gene which is essential for giving the phenotypic changes into the host after entry of the vector into the host. Okay? So, there is no such hard and fast rule that you always have to use the antibiotic resistance genes as the selection pressure. You can use any other selection pressure. For example, you can, as we discussed in the previous slide, you can use the blue white screening as well where an enzyme is being used to distinguish between the host which has taken up the vector or the host which has not taken up the vector. The third is the promoter. So, every, every uh, vector which uh, you are going to design is going to uh, either should have the vector if it is a uh, if it is a over expression vector. Uh, the plasmid is replication is performed by the DNA, rep, DNA all these enzymes, but the uh, Promoter is something which actually allows the uh, transcription as well as the translation of that particular gene. So, the promoter you will put in those vectors which you are going to use for the overexpression of that particular protein or overexpression of the recombinant DNA. Whereas, the promoter can be or uh, can be removed or can be excluded from the uh, vector if you are simply designing a vector for the cloning purposes which means if you are just using the vector for carrying the uh, foreign DNA from the one host to another host but your purpose is not to over express that particular foreign gene. In those cases the promoter can be excluded from the vector design. So, uh, depending on these uh, people have designed different types of vectors. Uh, uh, these the vectors are uh, could be the bacterial plasmids, it could be the phage based vectors, it could be yeast vector and it could be the mammalian vector. This is the example of the prokaryotic vector uh, whereas all these three are in the, in the category of eukaryotic vector. And as we as we as we have discussed, the vectors are actually contain its own origin of replication. That's why the uh, not it's not it's not that that uh, one vector will replicate in different host strains. As you have seen in the previous slide itself, if you have the origin of replication from call E1, that is going to replicate only into the E. coli. Whereas if you have the origin of replication from RS1 then it is going to replicate in gram negative or the gram positive bacteria. 
So, that is why that is what is true not only for the prokaryotic system that is also true for the uh, prokaryotic as well as the eukaryotic system. So, if you that is why it is says that one vector will not replicate in different, stro different strains as long as if it does not contain the origin or replications. That is why most of the uh, uh, eukaryotic plasmids are also contain the original replication for the uh, for the bacterial system means they also have the original replication for prokaryotic system as well. So, uh, considering these uh, we have developed the, the people have developed the different types of uh, uh, vectors uh, uh, we, we are going to discuss only the following set of vectors which are bacterial plasmids, phage, yeast and mammalian type of vector. What we are going to discuss is not the extensive discussion about the different types of plasmid or different types of vector found under these categories. What we are going to discuss is the re, probably one or two representative of each class and we what we are going to discuss is only the features. The, there is no uh, end of the uh, plasmids or there is no end of other kind of vectors which people have developed for these host strains and it is almost impossible to discuss all of them. So, let us start with the bacterial plasmids. Uh, so, bacterial plasmids is widely being used for foreign DNA into bacteria as a host strain. Uh, if you take a bacterial plasmid, it can be exist in three different forms. Uh, what are these different forms? So, you can have the bacterial plasmid which is, is as you know that the bacterial plasmid is a double standard DNA, but it can exist in three different forms. Uh, if the both strands are intact and circular, then it is called as the covalently circular model or covalently circular uh, closed circles which is called triple C. Whereas, if you expose this particular DNA to the endonuclease, uh, what will happen is the it endonuclease is going to create the nick on one of the strand and that is how it is actually going to create the opening of the outer circle and that is how it is going to create another form of plasmid which is called which is uh, which is going to called as the open circle and or the OC DNA. Whereas, when you isolate the plasmid from the bacteria, the covalently closed circular loses few of its turns. So, what happens is that it actually uh, twists around its own and because of that it actually creates a super coiled conformation which is this. And you can actually convert a super coiled DNA from a super coiled DNA to the uh, to the uh, uh, closed circular DNA simply by adding the topoisomerase. Topoisomerase is going to make or destroy the, uh, the, uh, the uh, supercoiled DNA to make it to the relaxed co covalently closed circular DNA or if you put the DNA gyrase to the uh, to the triple C DNA that actually will convert the uh, triple C DNA to the super coiled DNA. Similarly, so all these three forms are existing at the same time and all these three forms are mutually and exclusively could be exchanged to each other simply either by the uh, enzymatic changes or by the some kind of physical changes as well. And uh, if you isolate a plasmid, you will see that all these three forms exist at the same time. So, when the people have started uh, uh, the, um, the molecular cloning, they were uh, uh, in the beginning they were using the, uh, the plasmids or the plasmid which are available into the natural, natural plasmids which are being present inside the bacterial cell and these were like uh, either the PSC 101 or PMB 1 or the RSF 2124. Okay. But when they realize that some of these plasmids are not good enough to, uh, to do the molecular cloning because of the disadvantages of one or the other. Because of that what they have decided is that they will decided to design a unique as well as the robust plasmids which can be used for molecular cloning purposes and that is how they have taken the good 
area or good components of all these three plasmids and that is how they have designed a new D, new plasmid which is called as the PBR322. So, you can see that the they have taken this part of the DNA from the RSF2124, this part they have taken from the PSC101 and this part what they have taken is from the PMB0, uh, PMB1 derived material. What you could see is that from the uh, RSC2124, they have taken the ampicillin resistance gene and from the PSC101, they have taken the tetracycline resistance gene. So, that is how they have introduced two selection markers into the uh, into the uh, into the plasmids and then they have taken the origin of replication from the PMB1. So, that is how they have taken the origin of replication from this particular uh, plasmids and that is how what they have realized that this particular newly designed plasmid which is they called as the PPR322 is robust enough to, uh, to, to perform different steps of the molecular cloning and it was having the better utility of perform of uh, in integrating the uh, inserting the foreign DNA into the plasmid as well as the selection of this particular newly designed plasmid was much easier compared to the selection of in either of these plasmids and they have uh, published this particular work into this particular uh, this particular article. So, if you are Im interested to know how they have designed and how they have constructed this particular plasmid, you I, I uh, strongly encourage you to go through to this lect to go through to this particular such article and read that actually not only going to give you the idea how to design the new plasmids, but also that will tell you that how much uh, efforts these people have could have put to design a new plasmid taking up the material from the three different uh, individual plasmid. So, this is the uh, vector map of the PBR322. What you will see is this is the ampicillin resistance gene, this is the tetracycline resistance genes and this is the origin of replication and this is the recombinant gene. Okay? What you will see is that PBR322 is a 4359 base pair long plasmid and it has the 40 unique restriction sites. These restriction sites are widely distributed among the ampicillin resistance genes or the tetracycline resistance genes. So, you have the uh, 11 restriction sites which are present in the tetracycline resistance genes. So, you have actually the uh, 11 uh, restriction enzymes which are present in the tetracycline resistance genes. Then you have the 6 sites which are present within the uh, ampicillin resistance genes and the uh, two sites are present within the promoter of the tetracycline resistance genes and cloning of any DNA fragment into these sites will disrupt the resistance gene and as a result it can be used as a criteria for selecting the recombinant plasmids. Which means if you use any of these excitation sites or any of these excitation sites, you could be able to disrupt the gene of that particular resistance genes and that could be a one of the criteria which you can use to screen and uh, to screen the newly formed recombinant DNA. What is the application of PBR true? Uh, PBR true was the first or the initial plasmid which people have uh, developed for molecular cloning purposes. So, it was very very popular for cloning purposes. It is used to study the transcription as well as the translation of prokaryotic genes and it is the primary source to design and construct the improved plasmid for specific applications. And because of this third point only, I am encouraging all the students to read this particular article to, uh, to know that how to design a new uh, uh, new uh, uh, vector or new plasmids, so that if required they could be able to uh, redesign their own plasmids for their own purposes. 
and that is how they can be able to circumvent or that could be that is how they can be able to overcome from the problem what they were be uh, facing with the existing plasmids which they have in their own labs. So, the third second plasmid which has been derived from the PBR322 is called as the PUC19. PUC19 is the initial example of bacterial plasmids of a small size it is a 2.8 kb plasmids containing the multiple cloning site the use uh, the multiple cloning site is being kept in this between the initiation codon that is the aog and the codon number 7 the mcs design of the many of these cloning strategies are uh, that the large number of enzymes are available within the lag g okay or you have the multiple cloning sites which uh, you can use and uh, because it also has a recession enzyme within the lag g uh, you can actually use uh, for rapid detection by the blue white screening which we are going to discuss in the subsequent lecture and uh, so apart from so in if you see Apart from the blue white screening as a screening criteria, you also have the ampicillin resistance gene which it has which, which it got from the uh, PBR322 and so that is how uh, this is actually much more advanced compared to PBR222 simply by because it has the uh, smaller in size. So, you can see that the first thing is people have done is they have removed the unwanted junk DNA from the PBR322 to reduce the size and that actually will allow you to produce and put the more larger DNA into the plasmid and then what they have done is they have introduced the lag Z in, uh, uh, gene and lag G will actually will allow you to do the blue white screening. So, that is an additional screening criteria or a screening method what is been introduced by derive, uh, deriving the PUC19 from the PBR222 and the multiple cloning sites is also been uh, 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 put in a better way compared to the PBR222. So, with this we would like to conclude our lecture here. Thank you.